so weekly update number 16 and um as always we're going to chat today about what's happening on our emails in spain a few updates from what's happened during the week um, our youtube comments uh, some extras at the end and we're going to start with talking about um back in the uk what's going on mainly at the bls offices for people who are applying through there but we haven't had any appointments go through this week um so we've got no reports back from the bls offices um uh see what's going on there this week hopefully we've got uh three going through manchester one through edinburgh i think next week so we should get some more information back from then um, but what we have got or what we have had is just this horrific booking of the appointment through the bls website let us know your experience put it below and um, what we do for our clients is we um jump on if needed a screen sharing software now some people seem to jump on and get it straight away boom they get in and that's it and i think it's just a luck of the draw how the system seems to feel on the day but other times it's so labor intensive to get an appointment and my main advice is just keep going keep going if you get now there's a common fault that's coming up at the moment which says um, the ip address has been uh, used too many times so we've blocked you out come back in a few minutes you have to wait at least 10 minutes for that to clear i was at the stage yesterday that was the first time i've seen it this week and i'm doing these nearly at least once a week i'm jumping on with somebody and going through the booking system and um we had problems initially with email one time password codes coming through then they come through um and then actually the size of the photos well, we've worked out the png works better than jpeg and it's got to be less than 200 kbs uh, I, was I was talking to a client today actually said if you're using an ipad and it is possible to book on an ipad make sure you select the medium size photo or it won't be accepted and so it's all good tips on how to get through that horrific booking system um, which now you have to pay your money at the end and make sure when you go to the BLS that, that money is taken off of the bill. Okay, so it's around 14.55 each, uh, which you have to see that it's uh, taken off. Um, as I say, if you're one of our clients, we will book in an hour, go on a screen sharing software, have you on the phone as well, and we just go through it together because we're gonna need access to your email or you're gonna need access to your email to give us one-time codes then there's going to be a payment made, etc. But that's not a problem. We do it all with you. You have to be on the other side of the computer because it does a facial recognition photo scan. All right. And sometimes when you do that, you have to move your head side to side to make sure it's a real person that they're actually looking at. Um, but yeah, once you get through that stage, but we line it all up for you. We also give you an instructional video to let you know what's going on. Uh, and then I'll jump on and go through the process with you. If you're not one of our clients and you're going through it, all my only advice is just persevere and carry on. Just keep on going. OK, because you will get there in the end. And if you see that it's kicked you out, the best thing you can do is go off and get a cup of tea or maybe it's later in the evening, go and glass, get a glass of wine. Wait, hold your breath and go back into it. So there we go. That's what's been happening in the UK. So uh, let's carry on with what's been going on over here in Spain. So moving on to what's happening in Spain, and we've got a couple of points here that we've... Uh, tag for this week well first one is um itv documents now uh, we were arranging this week uh, an itv and um the person in question didn't have the white feature technica now this is my first experience with this because um we you now have the uh, digital feature techni technicas which are just white prints which means everyone's an original rather than the uh, blue ones which they traditionally used to print out which have got big stickers on the back which means that the itv details aren't put on the back they're just held on the digital uh, feature and you can check them with my me dgt app and uh, when itv booked where the person in question didn't have a uh, white feature and i was like, oh i don't know how you get a duplicate now i know that you used to have to get a duplicate for the blue ones by booking a very special appointment uh, at the itv they'd have to apply to industry for the details they'd give you a ring and tell you this is your appointment now because we've got the details and when you come in go and pay your 20 euros to get your duplicate um so i emailed the itv and they basically said to us that uh, there's three ways to get this document if you're missing it 
okay? But there's a fourth way, there's four ways actually. So if you're missing your white feature technica, then there's one extra way that you can get it rather than the blue one because Traffico can give you a copy. Traffico can't give you a copy if you've lost a blue version with the stickers on the back. You have to get that from the ITV itself. Okay, so that's the difference. The white one's Traffico, make an appointment, then you'll get your duplicate there given to you. I think it's a fee of around 20 euros, but they can't give you the blue ones at Traffico. Now the ITV station can also do the white ones as well. So the details for the ITV station if you're in Andalusia is you have to phone the 959-999999 number or you can go on their website itv.com. I'm going to show the website here and order a duplicate on there. Um, or you can just nip down and tell them and uh, get a A number. So when you go into the ITV, you'll see Otros Gestiones and have you got an appointment, Tienes Tita. If you haven't, you press Otros Gestiones, it gives you an A number and you go straight to the desk and tell them that you need a duplicate. If you've got a Gestor, a traffic Gestor, they can also order them for you as well. And that quite often sometimes is the quickest way to go about it. So there you go. If you're in Andalusia and you're missing your white feature technica, that's the three ways that you can get a duplicate for that. What else have we got here going on? Right, check this out. This is a letter that my colleague Jane, um, you hear me talking about her all the time. You won't see her on YouTube because she will not come on the channel. <laughs> Um, she prefers to stay behind the scenes. Uh, Jane has written this, the, uh, Jane's hubby got this letter. It came in English and in Spanish. This is the English version. And this is from the National Institute for Statistics. And believe it or not, if you get one of these letters, you're obliged to comply and give them the details they're asking for. Then all those details are collected and they're sent off to the DRID so they can put their statistics together. Um, in this case, there was a phone number on the back of this letter for a chap who is running the area. Um, we phoned him up. <clears throat> I was just out of pure curiosity. I wanted to phone and find out what was going on. And he said, right, OK, yes, you've received a letter. Um, I'm going to make you I'm going to give you a call um, and I'm going to ask you some questions about your daily habits and spends. And then I'm going to tell you some receipts that I want you to keep at the end of the week. We're going to collect them and we're going to send them off to Madrid and believe it or not you're actually obliged to do this if you live in Spain and you receive one of these letters okay now I'm not too sure if there'd be a fine or something if you didn't comply but um, if you do get one of these letters from the National Institute of Statistics then please just go along with what they say now it came in English but when we phoned the guy he didn't speak any English so um, you know there's that bear that in mind if you're gonna have to phone them because you might need a translator with you and the norm is that they ask you all what you're your weekly expenditures are so they might go into things like your electric your water and stuff like that and then they send that all off so they can create national statistics for different areas but yeah I, i've never seen one before um in all my years here i've never had one i've had a few phone calls from the national statistic people asking me question but i never um comply with those calls because you never really know if it's really them do you and i'll be honest with you on a couple of occasions they've phoned up and they said can you just confirm your nie number is this christopher good echo with an nie that ends in this give me your full number to confirm i'm like well no confirm your company details first and and uh, and who you're phoning from and they'll say oh no we're from the national statistics i said well, give me your name and your nie number then i'll check online and if that's correct i'll give you mine and then most of the time they just put the phone down on me and that's not me being awkward i'm just being cautious because you should never give your nie number on the phone albeit it seems to be very commonplace here the other day i was with a friend and someone phoned up uh and i said just uh, can you just confirm your dna number my friend oh yeah it's confirmed just it's me and i went why did you just confirm me when well, that's what that's what we do and i'm like Phew. I'm not comfortable with that. So, yeah, you don't, on the phone, unless you, this was an official letter and it was delivered, you would have to comply to this. And But if it's on the phone, <clears throat> do you have to comply? If people aren't willing to share their details with you, then my opinion is no. Um, and what else did we have going on in Spain? Uh, oh, yes, and this was another thing which Jane brought up, which was very, very interesting, was the trade... I think I might mention this. Was this the trade agreement between New Zealand and Spain? This is just kick it off. Now, does this mean that we're going to see New Zealand wine and lamb in Spain, and is it going to help the exports of our products to New Zealand? Let's hope it does. 
free uh, commerce is good. It keeps the world going round, and uh, it might be nice to get a couple of uh, New Zealand wines in here. Although Spain has fantastic wines, who knows? So yeah, check that out. And last but not least, what's been going on in our appointments? Well, we have had this week uh, a couple of appointments in Almeria, booked so long ago. Still trying hard to get those appointments over there. It's an absolute nightmare. We try 20 times a day, every day. Uh, EU residency appointment for a self-employed person. Um, we're seeing a lot of uh, EU sort of remote workers coming over at the moment. Malaga is very, very uh, uh, popular with, I believe, digital nomads now. You know, not only digital nomads coming on the famous third country national visa, but also people with EU passports who are coming and want to stay here and work. So that's great. Um, and then today we had another NIE number. Remember, nowadays, if you get an NIE, then they will give it to you straight away. You don't have to wait for the signature from the boss in the back. It comes with a QR code. So, um, yeah, that's, um, that's what's been happening on our appointment front. So uh, let's look at YouTube and other bits and bobs. Right, with our YouTube channel, you if you follow us, you follow Scats as well on YouTube Spain, uh, you would have seen that Antonio the Hestor was on there talking about um, tax returns. So we actually have a vodcast coming out next week with Antonio where we talk about the Spanish tax return. Please don't miss that. It's one of my best ones yet. It's my fifth one. They're not going that well, to be honest. Not many takers and been let down a couple of times and I need... Need some more people. If you were to come on my podcast and you're a pl and you're a client or a business here, then let me know um, because uh, yeah, and I like to do them in person as well. Uh, we've got Bill Anderson coming up on there, the writer uh, who was the one uh, councillor in the uh, Mijas uh, town hall, and now is a writer. Or so he that's going to be an interesting one. And I'm trying to get a few more people on, but this was a brilliant one with Antonio. We really really got a lot of information into the half an hour about the tax returns in Spain. So don't miss it. Check that out. Um, and as for our comments on the YouTube channel, um, I also tried to set up a shop on the YouTube channel and it didn't work very well. I don't know what I did wrong. I thought, oh, it'd be cool to have T-shirts on the YouTube channel. Doesn't seem to be working that well at the moment. So uh, if you suddenly see random T-shirts popping up on this channel, that's me just messing about thinking it'd be cool to have T-shirts on there, but we're coming up to summer but it didn't work um and moving backwards uh tim whistle tv oh he's looking one of our old weekly updates uh yeah the board eggs made me laugh and it's it's a new one on me yep yeah, that was right back in weekly update three don't buy bald eggs that was uh quite funny check that out if you haven't seen it this was a great comment from uh toasties van build 4644 this made me laugh, it really did, because I looked at these. Now, I normally don't go through the YouTube stuff until we finish office in the office and I go home with an evening. Um, and um, he said, uh, oh yeah, so what sort, in our, I had a suburbs of Malaga, I literally just put, I was going off to see Scats to help him with his cancer treatment and uh, just a consultation at this point and I literally put the camera on the car and had a drive I got a bit lost I thought oh, it'd be cool to show people the suburbs because I'm a bit lost in him um, and he says so what sort of things do Cada 4 sell and I understood Cada which means face and in a 4 number sell I keep hearing it being mentioned love the odd spontaneous videos by the way cheers mate thanks for that that's great we do like to get the spontaneous ones out as well um, and I was like Cada, and, I, and now I say out loud Cada 4 I should have known he meant Cada 4 but I was looking at it slightly tired going Cada four? What's that mean? So I went back to him and said, uh, at what point in the mention video do I mention Cada four? And he came back and said, no, I can't spell Cada four, which, and he spelled it wrong again. Uh, so I was like, all oh, right, Cara four, I know what you mean now. So let me explain to you what Cara four is. Now, Cara four here, I believe it's a French uh, chain initially, but it's a huge supermarket here in Spain. It's one of the, when I first lived here, uh, 25 years ago it was one of the first sort of hyper supermarkets that you would go to you know so you've got like your Mercadonas your Lidl's your Aldi's they will pop up all over the place Mercadona being the original sort of one you had the uh, Mascoms another one that's up these are all like supermarkets um, which we have about but Carrefour was like the big one which sold everything you know it was like your Tesco but um, 
and it was huge. And um, they're very, very, very big here in Spain. And you'll find the Carrefours are absolutely massive. And you can get everything from them. Uh, they are like hypermarkets. Now, I find they they can be expensive, but I find they're very, very good because if you go into them, you can get a lot of local products which they do support local economies. So I've been to Carrefour in Catalonia, I've been to Carrefour in uh, Andalusia, and I've been to Carrefours on provincials levels, like um, Almeria and Malaga, for example, and they do have different prog products from that area if you wanna buy them, specifically wine, for example. So in Almeria, I managed to get some wines from Granada in the Almeria region, which you just couldn't get here in this Carrefour. Um, here in Malaga, they seem to have a lot of Ronda wines, and they also have wines from different regions you just don't get in your Mercadonas and your Lidls. So things like Priorat wines, if you really want a treat and you don't mind a wine which is which is uh, got a lot of body and quite strong, you want to look at wines from the Priorat region. I don't have a bottle to show you today, actually, but I will do, and I'll put one on. It's one of my favorite regions, and they sell it there in Carrefour. It's the only place I can get it since Corte Inglés in Mijas closed down their wine shop. Um, what's also good with Carrefour is the electrical items. We've recently, well, last year, bought a new TV from there, and we got our original TV uh, from there 13 years ago, uh, which is still going strong, 42 inch, it's got a couple of lines down it, but who cares? Um, and um, they also have a very good club card system, whereas if you do shop there regularly, you can get a lot of discounts, a lot of three for twos as well. And for families, we first got introduced to Carrefour when we had a young family because we were, we had my children uh, two years apart. So we literally went from nappies to nappies. <laughs> so we had like four years maybe of that. And for things that you need for children, it's very, it's cheap. They have an awful lot of offers on uh, for families, a lot cheaper than other supermarkets. So yeah, Carrefour, if you are coming to Spain, it's very worth checking out. Um, they have their internal butchers, they have an internal fish market. Uh, I got introduced to a fish called a corbina. So the corbina, but with a B, so it's C-O-R-B-I-N-A. There, where we went there to buy some different fish, and the guy said to me, oh, have you ever tried a corbina? It's cheap white fish, but it's very, very, very good, and you can get a whole one for about a tenner, and that'll feed your whole family. I said, no, I've never tried it. Bring it on, let's go. And we had it, and we had it on the barbecue, and it was uh, wrapped in foil, actually baked on the barbecue, and it was absolutely amazing. I mean, for 10 euros, it fed the whole family. So yeah, definitely um, go to Carrefour if you are looking to, um, looking to, to, to find some more local products or products which you might not be able to find in other supermarkets. Uh, there's a note there from Ant and Kez, not been very well, I hope you're feeling better guys. Uh, and I did get lost, yeah, I wasn't quite spotted in Bordeaux, but I won't be driving around Bordeaux after your advice. Uh, Chris McMillan, uh, our client there, I've had a conversation with this morning. Uh, well, not this morning when I'm recording this video and uh, amazing job on his docks there. It's um, been a pleasure to work with you and we're all ready to go. He's a consulate. Won't be long till you're here soon. Um, here's a good one. I'm a pensioner. I hope to move to Spain in the near future. Renting first and we'll have to have 28,800 EPREM. I'll buy a property. Do I still have to have the 28,800 or less because I've bought a property and won't have to pay rent a year? Okay, so this is quite a complicated one. I'm gonna do a video on this, uh, the full sort of financial, do an updated video on it because it, things have changed um, slightly. But yeah, look, do they take into an account your property value? They will do, but they don't give us the calculation on how much they take into account. So we have always used properties. So if you've got a property, put in a notice simply, and we can use it as part of your financial means, but we don't get given the calculation of what they will take from the value of that property towards your EPREM. So it's always best, even if you have got a property, unless you absolutely have to, to stay within the cash limits of passive income and savings. That's our advice, always. Um, uh, Patrick O'Connell there. Yeah, he has questions which we had answered last week, but Patrick has been in contact with our colleague Costa over there in Valencia. does a fantastic job up there and uh, he'll be doing his EU residency with him over there. 
so there we go and then just moving on to our last section unfortunately i didn't get to the wine this week um so i'll have to get used the bottle for next week it was during the week so uh, oh i just wanted to show you this photo here of look at that look at those amazing clouds that was uh came home from work and just chilled out on tuesday had a screaming headache believe it or not so i was like i'll oh, just lie down for a minute outside and that was the view some photos so uh, i thought i'd show you that because uh, it just the skies are absolutely beautiful this time of year absolutely amazing and then as for food what have we been eating let me just pull up what i what i, indi what I wanted to show you here and um yeah so we've got uh oh where is it oh it's bear with me now can't find it where are we well i can't find it. there you are check these sardines out now these sardines uh, i think i've spoken about sardines before um but i'm i'm really encouraging people to try this when they get here it's because they're so cheap it's the time of the year yeah. and good sardines for it these were sardines that we uh that we cooked uh, again on our barbecue i think these were the ones from the last time i earmarked this photo for some reason um but i'll just say now's the time of year for sardines that's what i wanted to highlight we do them all the time and they're cheap and they're so good for you if you can learn how to do it on an espeto which one day i'm going to do a video about um it's really 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 worth it so there you go there's our sardines and don't forget if you do have them on an espeto so on a stick over the barbecue you can do other things like pool bar always go to the fish market and never be scared to try and with the cost of meat going up seems to maintain its cost here uh, price here it's making it ever cheaper so it's not cheaper than it's ever been but it is cheaper to the rest of the products at the moment we would buy to eat because it doesn't seem to have gone up in line with things like meat so there we go guys thanks for watching the weekly update as always it's been an absolute pleasure if you've got any questions for the weekly updates please put them below if you've got toes or anything where you're living in spain uh, just send them across and we'll put them on you know let other people know what is happening out and about in other places if you do have any events or anything that you want me to say on these weekly updates just feed me with the content and we'll get it out there it's uh, they're going really well people who I've been talking to maybe coming on board as clients next week uh, next year so starting to follow them as well um and we want to know everybody's experience to get that out there to other, for other people as well um not only from spain but from the uk as well so there's some that you think is worth putting on there but on on here to let people know uh, about moving to spain um just let me know just let me know and let's get it let's get it out there and um, this has been a a dream of mine to do these weekly updates and because we're locked away in the office quite a bit i don't always get loads of content to actually put on them so you guys can feed it to me if you want as well and um, as long as it's not rude i'll put it on <laughs> all right thanks for watching subscribe and we'll catch up with you next week for our next weekly update don't forget to watch the tax return podcast and there's a few other random videos of me driving around coming out soon as well